What's up, Jags fans? Here we are on a Tuesday night, our regularly scheduled Tuesday night with a 9 p.m. start time, just like always. I appreciate you guys being here. You guys know we have a lot of fun talking Jags. This is a fan show. So get into the chat. Tell me what you think. Today, we're two weeks-ish before the draft, so we're going to be talking about possible trade day scenarios. Now, if you missed the last show, it was a lot of fun. Uh, the chat got to do the draft, so basically went through a whole mock draft. The chat picked. We went off the comments. We counted the comments up, and the chat picked a draft, and it, it was pretty good. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I liked the way it went. Um, go back and watch that. Um, in that episode, we said specifically there was going to be no trades, so we're just going to draft chalk. But we know. Trent Balky likes to do some draft day trades a little bit. Um, so we're going to be taking a look at what the possibilities, what it could look like, um, the numerical values that are actually assigned to each draft pick, amongst other things. Before we get into that, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel while you're here. Uh, just hit the subscribe button. Um, we're doing pretty good on subscribers. We're almost at 3,000, which is great, considering that uh, we just talk Jags and read comments. And uh, follow the social media. You'll see the Twitter and the Instagram down below. Those are my favorite ways to talk about Jags outside of YouTube. So make sure you are all involved in that. This is also a fan show. So get into the comments. Since it is a fan show, we always shout out the first person in the chat. And the first person in the chat was channel member Volkfang. So I appreciate that. He says here. Uh, Robbie Santa says hi. Rico says here. Kevin is here. BT says Duval. Uh, Rico, BT, Brett Zimmerman, Volkfang, Sea Breachers, all here as channel members. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you for being channel members. That means a lot to me. Rod Jeebs is here. Uh, sea Breacher was doing a little, uh, little modding on my Twitch channel uh, last night when I was streaming. We got a little spam in there, and Sea Breacher just ban hammer dropped it on him. It was great. So I appreciate that, Sea Breacher. Uh, it's a lot of fun on there if you're into that type of thing. My Twitch is in the video description below kyle's here irish jag this is what irish jag had to say he says steven from ireland i just finished the night shift 2 a.m great to catch a live show again let's like let's give it up for irish jag being here at 2 a.m there's nothing nothing hits better than like when you're off work and it's super late everyone's sleeping you're still awake you know you've just worked a nice long shift uh, great feeling. Glad you're here, Irish Jag 77. Uh, Jaggernaut says, uh, hello, Jags United. Draft day, Christmas is almost here. Okay, so now I want to hear some trade type situations. All right, so let's just take a little peek over here. This may be kind of hard for you to see. I, I don't know if you can see it or not. Um, I guess I, get, I guess it looks kind of hard for me to see from your point of view. So we'll zoom in a bit. So basically, there's a numerical value assigned to each individual pick. Okay, and you may be thinking, well, what is, I mean, this is drafttech.com. Like, what is this uh, uh, arbitrary number assigned to draft picks? But you'd be surprised from what I've heard that GMs actually use this um, for evaluating what each pick is worth. So as you can see, uh, the pick one that Chicago has, let me get my little pen tool here. Uh, pick one is worth 3,000. Okay, we'll call it points. Okay, Washington with the second pick is 2,600 pick, uh, 2,600 points, and you'll see the Jags' first pick here is worth 950. Okay, so we're gonna use this because I I do think that GMs do use this to evaluate the, the value of their draft picks. We're gonna use this to see what we would have to trade up to in order to get to some of these picks. So to kind of get you to kind of wrap your brain around a little bit more, um, I did some quick math for you here on the side, okay? If you add up, and let me see how this looks here real quick on your screen. Do I have a little bit of space here? If you add up picks, the first round pick, okay, that works, and the second round pick. So if you add up our first two picks, all right, I'm gonna bring my math up here. I'm not gonna act like I did it all in my head. Uh, if you bring up the first two picks, uh, round one and round two, that would give us a total of 1370. Okay. So if we packaged our first two picks together, that would give us 1370. Okay. That would land us right above Chicago's uh, first round pick. So realistically, and for the sake of this show on what we would have to trade up for, if we packaged our first and second round picks together, we could move up to uh, pick nine just for context here. And again, 
not su and I know that you could throw in guys like um, Cam Robinson. You could throw in other people like that to make the value more. And if you want to do that with your suggestion, go ahead and do it. Um, I don't know if they can. I don't know how you could really assign a value to players, but we can try. We can kind of guess there. Uh, but that's gonna gonna be how it kind of works. All right. So uh, just for those of you that are wondering, if you do our first, second, and third pick, okay. So first round pick, second round pick, and third round pick, that would give us fourteen eighty six. Okay. That would move us up to uh, one more pick. So that's how uh devalued third round picks are compared to these first round picks okay so you may be thinking uh all right hypothetically what would it take for us to move up into this 3000 uh, range to get the first overall pick okay great question here's some context for you if we did all of our picks in 2024 okay all of our picks and if we take a look here that's uh 17 48, 96, 114, 116, 153, 212, and 236. If we had all of those picks together, okay, that would give us a total of 1640. So all of our picks in the draft would land us hypothetically at the sixth pick. Just being real with y'all. This is what it would take to move up to the sixth pick is all of those picks. All right. So uh, what if we packaged... Um, a first round pick this year and a first round pick next year. Now I'm assuming that the value of these picks is going to remain the same next year. So the value will carry over to next year. That would give us uh, 2000. So for two first round picks would move us up into the fourth spot. Okay. So uh, trading picks, I don't think is, it just kind of gives your, your mind to kind of wrap around a little bit. If you want even more of your head wrapped around it. Okay. If you packaged our first this year, our first next year, our second this year, and our second next year, that would give us twenty nine fifty, and it still wouldn't be enough to move up into the first pick. Just for context, okay? Just for context. So now that I've kind of explained to you how it's going to go, uh, go ahead and give me your, I mean, I know some of you have already given me your trade suggestions, and that's fine. Uh, we'll go over them. But uh, just to kind of give you an idea, that's how it works. Um, keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, Will Rouse says, I just want Trent Balky to live his best life on draft weekend. So draft a linebacker and a running back. Ken Boyer says, please help Trevor's offense, please. Channel member Volkfang says, the team needs an alpha wide receiver, outside and slot corner, edge, interior defensive lineman, offensive tackle slash guard help. If they can move back, maybe use future capital to pick up one or two extra second or third round picks, they can solve most of that. So Volkfang is saying to trade back. And um, I got an interesting little message on Twitter here uh, from Robert Colson. And again, I encourage you guys to, to get on Twitter and, um, and send me your stuff here so that I can uh, show it here. So Robert Colson wants to take the 17th pick and trade down uh, with Dallas to get 24 87 and 174 okay so he says this is what robert colson wants to do this is what it says on this piece of paper all right uh and then he wants cornerback with 24 ennis rakenstraw as a starter at 48 he wants edge chris broswell um basically edge three i'm um, at 87 he wants a wide receiver javon baker at 96, he wants Blake right tackle, Blake Fisher. Okay, so it kind of seems like this is the, the route that they want to go. Um, he kind of gets into a little bit here of like this range going after guys like Johnny Wilson, uh, Zach Zenter, the right guard. Um, trade 153, trading up for Ayuk slash Higgins and Zay Jones. So he's got some like pretty creative stuff here. You can definitely tell he thought it out. So Robert, I want to I wanna give you a round of applause, Robert. Great job. Uh, way to uh, do some homework here on the back end and, and get this all sorted out. Um, Big Dog says, let's go Jags. Raiden Shogun Pokey says hello. Will Rouse uh, says, it's written in stone already that Trevor can't get a real receiver until year 10. We can only overpay for mid until then. Nolly Full Cab channel member, he's always in here. He spams the Blake Bortles emojis, and he can do that because he is a channel member. 
Isaiah Jones says, what's up, United? Just about to cook me up some HelloFresh garlicky fried chicken sandwiches. Ooh, that sounds pretty good. That sounds pretty good. I've been eating, um, I've been eating ground beef and rice uh, for about three days now. I, I, I don't have like a... I like good food, right? I like expensive food, and I like, uh, but I, I don't have to have it, right? And if I'm only eating for myself, I don't care. Give me my macros, and let's call it a day. Um, Robert Ayers says, what could the Jags get for Cam Robinson? That's a good question. I mean, if, I think straight up you could maybe get a, maybe a third or a fourth just because of the contract he has. Um, so we could assign that value maybe, maybe like 60 to 70 uh, I don't know, I'm sorry, maybe like 150. We'll, we'll get assign that about 150 to 200 if we wanted to. We'll do that. We'll assign Cam Robinson 150 to 200. Um, G Grant says, not opposed to trading up, but interested to see if it makes Balky look desperate uh, or that he's going for it. Isaiah Jones wants to get a Dunze at nine. President says, hey, Jags United, I honestly don't know where the Jags go from here based upon we collapsed last year at the tail end of the season after having a strong start. Nasir Premier says, finally caught a live one. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, Guy, channel member, says, who wants Cam? <laughs> Ken Boyer says, trade Cam. Second and a third to Chicago. Then pick Rome and JPJ. DJM says, Jason son. DJM says, I've been so busy. I haven't made a live in so long. DJM, we haven't forgotten about you. Okay. Listen, you're always welcome. Life gets busy. Life gets busy. I'm not going to sit here and act like life doesn't get busy. So I'll never blame you. I am just glad that you are here. All right. Let's take a look at some of this. Let's, let's go ahead and just see, like, realistically what this could look like. So this is our PFF mock draft simulator. We're only going to go three rounds, and we might even, like, go a little – we might not even go that far. But we're just going to take a look here at some realistic things that could happen, okay? So uh, we're going to go uh, – I'm not going to trade up with Chicago. Um, I'm not going to trade up with Chicago. Right. I mean, this would take I mean, look at what this what this would all take. I mean, this would take almost everything here. Right. Um, and they won't even accept it, really. So I'm going to let Chicago pick here. OK. So they took Caleb Williams. I feel like that's a dead given giveaway there. Um, if we look at the big board here, um, the next best player is Marvin Harrison, Jr. OK. Now, I think a quarterback goes here at Washington, so I probably wouldn't trade up to two. Um, PFF has Malik Neighbors as the second-best wide receiver. Joe Alt up here. Roma Dunze, I know a lot of you guys like. Um, Cooper DeGene actually got the ninth PFF grade, which is insane. Um, Quinion Mitchell got the tenth. Laitu Latu, another guy a lot of Jags fans want. Um, Fuaga, Brian Murphy. I mean, these are all guys. Fatuana, Terry on Arnold. So there's a lot here that could happen here. But I think with the second pick, uh, we probably, if it were me, I would let the second pick go because I think it's going to be a quarterback. So let's take a look. Uh, Washington is going to take Jaden Daniels. Okay. So um, I don't really think we had much to really trade up to that value anyways. Um, so if we take a look at the number three pick here. We would need at least 2200 right? And so that's going to be like a first this year and a first next year at least to move up to the third pick. I don't think that's something that we want to do. Um, yes, you could might be able to get uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. here, which would be a huge splash. You would have to trade a bunch of first-round picks for it. Uh, the thing is, is, and I don't even know that that New England would is going to take a quarterback. I mean, all the things coming out of New England is that like, he might not take a quarterback and he might take Marvin Harrison Jr. So, um, but I think for the sake of it, I still wouldn't trade up quite yet. Um, I'm going to let them make their pick here and let's see who they pick. And they take Drake May. Okay, so we got three quarterbacks off the board. We're still sitting pretty. Now, here's where if you really wanted to make a move for Marvin Harrison Jr., you would have to do it. Okay. So. Uh, if we take a look at our little draft chart here, we would need at least 1,800. Okay, so that's going to be um, a first this year, probably a first next year. Probably. Now, could you package together Cam Robinson, um, a second round pick, um, next year's second round pick, and then like a fifth? You probably could. 
Um, but I still think it would take two firsts to get you to Marvin Harrison Jr. And I don't know if he, if he, that's worth that to me because that's just like a lot of value. That's a lot of value there, and I don't think you could really do that. Um, so uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, Nasir Premier says, I've seen the rumor the Cardinals want three firsts. Gauging from the chart, it makes sense. Uh, Big Dog says, I don't think it's realistic for us to trade up higher than nine or eight without giving up our future. I agree there. I agree. Uh, Brett Zimmerman says, a little bit off topic, but what do you think the Jags absolutely need? I personally think they absolutely need a wide receiver. Um, I don't think you can roll into the season with uh, Christian Kirk, Zay Jones, Devin DuVernay, um, and... Uh, and, and um, Zay Jones, Christian Kirk, uh, Gabe Davis, Devin DuVernay, and uh, Parker Washington. I don't think you can roll into the season with that. You have to add a wide receiver. Um, corner is obviously the next biggest position of need. But I didn't even realize today that Xavier Howard is still a free agent. Why aren't we going out and getting Xavier Howard? That seems like a perfect like plug-and-play one-year guy. Ronald Darby could play a little slot. I don't, I don't know what we're doing here. So, um, Isaiah Jones says we're definitely not getting Marvin Harrison Jr. the first. Um, lots who's going to Atlanta, in my opinion, says Mr. Dolphin. Iris Jag says if top four picks are quarterbacks, would you give up next year's first round pick for Marvin Harrison Jr.? I don't, I wouldn't. I don't want to give up next year's first. I don't. I really don't want to give up next year's first. Um, I'm, I'm going to go on a limb and say I don't think that we will or that we should. And I think Marvin Harris Jr. is going to be a good player, but I don't think that we we should. Volk Fang says 17, 2025, third to Dallas for 24 and 56. A.D. Mitchell at 17, quarterback Rick and Straw at 48, Jonah Ellis at 56, and Dwayne Carter at 96. GRR says BTJ Truther checking in. I like it. Now he's a good player. Guy says, is Arden Key still available? He is still available, actually. Uh, Murtaza Zaidi says, picks have been useless in Balky's hands. Trade them for Harrison. Well, to be fair, their first-round picks have been okay. Trevon Walker, I think, is going to be a decent player. Um, I think that Anton Harrison was a good pick. So I, I think his first-round picks have been okay. So let's take a look at what they do here. I can see the Cardinals trading out of four. Um, but... We'll just kind of go here with what uh, PFF says. All right, so they took Marvin Harrison Jr. All right, so we kind of saw that coming. If we uh, if we look at like the uh, big board here, um, he's gone. We're looking the next the next best guys are like Malik Neighbors. Uh, I don't think we go tackle. I don't think we trade up for a tackle. Roma Dunze, a guy that we may be able to trade up for, but I think if they do, they'll probably just wait till he's until he falls. Uh, Quinion Mitchell, I think, is a guy they could trade up for. Um, so let's take a look here. Um, I'm, I don't think, I think, I mean, I don't think the Chargers trade out of their pick. They may. Let's take a look. Okay, so they took Bleak Neighbors. So now there's two wide receivers off the board. Um, now we're getting into Roma Dunze, and then we're, just, then we're down into the Brian Thomas Jr., the AD Mitchell range. Ricky Pearsall. I know there's some Ricky Pearsall fans in here, Mr. Dolphin. Um, so I don't think we go here. If we take a look at six, again, I think now since Neighbors is gone, the next best guy would be Roma Dunze. Uh, to trade up, according to our value chart, uh, to trade up to six, we would need to have at least 1,600. And that would basically be first round pick this year, second round pick this year, third round pick this year, and both our fourths. So that would add, add up to 1,602. Um, that would give the Giants a lot of picks. I don't necessarily think that they would do that, but that would be what it would take. Uh, basically that range of our first, our second, our third, and both fourths is what it would take. So I think there's a chance that Dunze could still be there. Um, I think that the Giants need a tackle. And they take J.J. McCarthy, which would be great for us because now the Titans, who definitely need a tackle, Um, what do you think about having two first round picks in this draft? Like trading next year's for this year's? I don't, 
I don't typically like doing that. But yeah, Pearsall is number one for sure. <laughs> Mr. Dolphin. Mr. Dolphin is not a Pearsall fan. I mean, he's not bad, but he was in a pretty lackluster offense last year. You got to remember the Gators offense was pathetic last year. The play calling was pathetic. The blocking was pathetic. They were just terrible. So, I mean, it happens. It happens. Players pop off. All right, look at the Titans picks. I think the Titans are going to take a tackle. And they take Dallas Turner, edge out of, out of Alabama. Okay. Decent pick. Didn't see that coming, but uh, that's all right. Um, now, the Falcons are a team who uh, they need D-line. They need corner. So, if we look at who's available on the board, again, they don't really have much needs here. Uh, the big problem is going to be um, the Bears, who I think will take a quarterback here. So, I think we're safe. I would hate to see Quinion Mitchell go here, but let's just take a look here and just let them pick eight. Okay, they took Joe Alt. I think they took. I think the Bears took a quarterback. Okay, so the so the Bears took Roma Dunze. Now, here's what I think the Bears take a quarterback. I think the Bears actually trade up probably with um, the Cardinals and take a quarterback. Um. And so if the Cardinals trade down, is there a chance that they trade down again? So if they go nine, so if it would take nine, according to this, to get Roma Dunze, that would be 1350. So that means we would need to give up, according to this, according to this, a first and a second would equal 1370. Okay. So that means the number nine team would trade down to 17 and then pick up number 48. And that would give us uh, 1370 is greater than 1350. So in theory, this could work a first and a second. Now, I don't think that will be enough. I think we might have to throw in maybe like um, a fourth, um, fourth and a fifth maybe. So or maybe a fourth. So we add it up to a fourth as well. Question is, would you trade a first? And you're really just swapping firsts. You're swapping first, and you're giving a second and a fourth to move up to nine to get Roma Dunze. This is where I think we may have some value, okay? I know we have a lot of needs, right? I know we have needs at corner. I know we have needs at D-line or edge, and we have needs at offensive line. But... I kind of think we could get away with this. Would this be enough? I don't know. Like, according to this, it is. I mean, would you guys... Would you guys do, do this? I mean, I feel like most of y'all would trade a... Would swap first and a second and a fourth for Roma Dunze. In this mock. You're right, Callie. But kind of gives us a little bit of an idea. And maybe... And again, maybe it's a... Maybe it's a fourth... Maybe it's both fourths. Right. Uh, maybe it's um, maybe it's maybe it's um, some some combination of that. But that would be about what it would take if he fell to that nine spot. And I think a Dunze is probably going to be around that nine spot only because of the needs that teams have at quarterbacks up here. Right. Um, we look at teams like Tennessee who don't need a quarterback. Chargers don't need a quarterback. Arizona doesn't need a quarterback. Now, they could obviously trade out of those spots. Because you have teams uh, that do need quarterbacks below them. Um, you can see some dark horse teams like Denver move up. Minnesota could move up. Chicago could move up. Um, min uh, all teams that can. Minnesota has two first round picks. So they're probably the biggest candidate to move up here. But if you could move into that nine spot. Um, it might be PTSD. I'm not going to lie. Mr. Dolphins, I'm just going to watch him compared to a, a A.D. Mitchell, and I just see a big difference. I think that there is a big – I think there is a tier of Marvin Harrison, um, uh, Roma Dunze, um, and uh, who was the other receiver? Um, uh, neighbors, Malik Neighbors. I think there's a big tier between them and the Brian Thomas, um, the A.D. Mitchell. Um, I just think there's a big tier there. Although these two guys here are kind of what the Jags need, but – I think one of those top three guys would just really help Trevor. Um, 
So I think the most realistic trade, I'm just going to say it now that we're almost 30 minutes in. I think the most realistic trade is swap firsts, a second, a fourth, and a fourth to move up to the nine pick. Now, again, a lot of us have penciled into this 244. I mean, that's that's corner. That's that's tackle. That's guard. That's edge. Um, so th we have needs there. But you guys have already said it in the chat. Trent Balky is not a guy who usually hits outside of the first round. So why not? Why not? Obviously, we have to find a trade partner. Uh, it's not always as simple as that. But I think I would be okay with that. Late to chat, what about trade back and take wide receiver, Lad, uh, Lad McConkney? The problem with Lad McConkney, Kevin, is um, he's kind of what we already have, right? He's, he's, he kind of is going to be like a, an upgraded Parker Washington. He's going to be like an uh, – he's going to be one of these like – he's going to be a downgraded Christian Kirk, I think. So it's just kind of like a, re uh, a repetitive position for some reason to me. Um I don't know. Adunze is good, but I don't think I'd give up what they need to get him, says Volkfang. Adunze is getting Devontae Adam comps, just saying. G, uh, G Grant, is anybody left in college can't miss? If not, go ahead and trade up now. That's a good point. Brett Zimmerman says, if we get Marvin Harrison Jr., sure, he might be good with Jacksonville, but they aren't very good at developing, um, developing sleepers. Calvin left because he couldn't get a long-term deal. Developing wide receivers is what you meant. Uh, I love the trade. It's just you'd have to guarantee me that we'd get a decent corner in the third. Uh, Volkfang says, I also need to consider where the wide receiver plays best from. Kirk is currently wide receiver one, and a guy that plays best from the slot is going to compete with those slot snaps with Kirk and Ingram. Good point. Right, let's get back to the simulator here. All right, so we're just going to say, for the record, Roma Dunze is off. Okay, now we're looking at 10. Who's left at 10? If you look, take a look at the big board, uh, these guys are all gone, 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 gone. Bowers is still there. Obviously, I don't think we traded for a tight end because of having Evan Ingram. Um, Jazir Newton, I mean, I think with the Arik Armstead, uh, we're solid there. I think Cooper DeJean falls. Now, Quinion Mitchell. We'll put a pin on Quinion Mitchell. Um, Latu, Latu. Do you trade up for him and just uh, develop him and, and tag uh, Josh Allen again and let him walk? Um, Byron Murphy, you'd probably not. Uh, Terry and Arnold, you could probably wait on. So unless you want to trade up for Quinion Mitchell, I don't think that there is really a realistic situation where you need to do that. So we'll get back to the mock draft here. Um, they don't need a corner. They just drafted Sauce Gardner, so you're pretty safe to say they're not going to draft Quinion Mitchell here. They took J.C. Latham. Uh, Vikings also don't need a corner. They need a quarterback or a tight end. I think they go this in this pick. They go Brock Bowers. Let's take a look. Brock Bowers. All right, now we're getting to where the um, the Broncos are here. Now, if the Broncos don't trade up, the best quarterback and the best wide receivers are gone. Um, so they could trade down. So I think the Broncos now become a team that is a interesting trade partner here. Now, they do need edge. If we take a look at who's left on our big board here, um, Jerzeer Newton, not really an edge. Um, Latu Latu is probably the pick here. Um so I think we, I mean, if they do, they probably go a lot too. So I think we'd be okay with not taking Quinion Mitchell here. So we'll just resume it. Jared Verse. Now Jared Verse comes off the board very early um, here in this mock draft. But, and I know that every mock draft is different, but I could see this happening. I actually think Jared Verse is one of the better edges in this draft, which leads to the question, if somehow, Five picks later when the Jags pick. If Jared Verse is still there, do you take him? Balky's been known to take the best available player. Um, 
I personally, I know we have needs all over the place, but I would be okay taking Jared Verse here. And, and I know that sounds crazy, but like I said, you can never have too many edge rushers. This does put you in a position where you could tag Josh Allen again, and then now you have three stud D linemen. Can you imagine Jared Verse, Josh Allen, Eric Armstead, and um, um, how, I, I'm I'm really blank. Trevon Walker. It's been a long day, boys. I I I literally I literally I know we've all had long days, but I have been going all day. Just I mean I I, I have been going all day. So excuse me if I have a little bit of lapse in memory of some of these people's names. I'm not justifying it or 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 suggesting. Uh, that you should give me an excuse. But typically, I'm good with like the words and the word usage. I'm going to be a little off today. I would trade it for Jared Verse. Uh, Jets taking Bowers, I think, says Isaiah Jones. Mr. Dolphin says, I'd be fine with McCockney, to be honest. He's an upgraded Zay Jones. We don't have a Brian Thomas, that's for sure. He's the one. Uh, DT says, trade second in a six for Higgins. The problem with Higgins is you have to pay him. That's the problem. Um, Jimma Mania says we should get Napers. So we looked at where Malik Napers went. And again, uh, Jimma, Jimma Mania, just for the sake of this draft, if he does go in that five range, according to the trap, the trade draft value chart, we would need to offer the Chargers about 1,700 points in value. And according to my calculations, I did the math in advance. Uh, that would require um, all... Picks this year equal 1640. So even all of our picks that we have this year, every single pick still wouldn't be enough to move up to the five spot. Now he may fall because of the quarterback run that it will inevitably happen. But so that's what it would take. It would basically take all of our picks. Now it's not realistic to trade all your picks, but that means you have to dip into next year's picks. Um, so just for context, that's what it would take for Napers, unfortunately. And you may be okay with that. If you like that, then that's that's fine. Uh, Big Dog says, we need more playmakers on this team. We don't have any difference makers on both sides of the ball, especially on offense. I agree. That's why I think we'd trade it for Roma Dunze. Uh, Volkfang, do you trade Josh Allen if Latu reverse is falling and you think you could get a first in Allen? I don't know. The problem with Allen is... Because he's on that franchise tag, it really diminishes his trade value. If he was like in the third year of his contract or um, he was getting paid, you know, he already had a contract done and his contract was somewhere around like 70 or $80 million total, I think he would have tremendous trade value. But the fact that he's probably asking for $100 million total and he's on his franchise tag, it's hard to trade him. Um, if you really wanted him, why wouldn't you just wait till next year um, then you could maybe get him in free agency or you could trade him for less than you would this year. So basically, unless you were like, we're going to use him, we're going to need him to win this year. It's in your best interest as a team to wait till next year to try to get a guy like Josh Allen, especially when you can go out and get another edge rusher. You could have already gotten one um, who's going to give you like production as well. That, that would be the only thing for me. Um, can you work out what we would receive in draft capital by moving back into the second round? Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Okay. Um, I'm going to wait till we get to our pick to do that, though. All right. So we're moving down. The, the Raiders are on the clock. Uh, they still don't need a corner. They do, but not. it's not a big need. Again, this is a team that could trade up for a quarterback. Um, this is a team that, could, that will probably draft an offensive lineman or a defensive lineman. So I'm going to go ahead and let them pick. And they took Quinnon Mitchell. <laughs> okay. So in this situation, we were looking at the 13th pick. All right. Um, I think this is as high. This is as high as I've seen Quinion Mitchell go. I've been seeing him go in about this range here. Okay. So we'll call the Quinion Mitchell range. We'll call it uh, 1,000 to 1,150 for Quinion Mitchell. So that's realistic. So. Um, a first and a fourth equals 1,016. So this may move you up one spot. So if Quinion Mitchell is there when Seattle's picking, 
Um, this may move you up to the Seattle pick. And this may move you up um, and then give Seattle a fourth. If there's a guy that they that they want, they know the Jags won't take. Maybe it's uh, uh, maybe it's an offensive lineman. Maybe it's a defensive lineman. They know the Jags aren't going to take him. And Quinion Mitchell is the obvious pick there for the Jags. The Seahawks could trade, uh, swap first, just move back one and pick up a fourth, and then we can move up one. Um, if we if we threw in another fourth, uh, that would put us at. Um, uh, I don't have that math, but that would put us. That would put us about at one, about 1,020. Wait, wait, it's right here. Wait a second. It would add 60 to it. So that would put us at about one, I'm sorry, 1,078. Okay, so that would move us up to about Indy's pick. So if we threw in another fourth. We could maybe move up two, give Indy two picks. Then we'd have to start moving into. Um, to move up to New Orleans pick here, we have to throw in probably a first and a third. Uh, we'd have to th and to move up to here, we'd probably have to throw in a. We'd probably have to do a first, a third, and both fourths to move up to where uh, above Vegas. Okay, so that's basically what you're looking at for Quinion Mitchell. He could fall, I and mean, you could roll those dice if you're Trent Balky. But realistically, he's not going to fall. I think he's. I think he's the best corner in this draft. So, uh, would you be willing to trade swap firsts, give a third, fourth, and a fourth to move up for Quinion Mitchell? I don't know if I love him that. I mean, I do. I don't know if I love him that much, especially because I keep getting this like. I can't get this Xavier Howard thing out of my head. Like, why is he still available? Like, I know he's had some injuries, but. That seems like a guy you could bring in for veteran presence, knows what it's like to play at a high level. Um, but that's about what it would take to move up to those spots here. So what are your thoughts on moving up there? Um, Mr. Dolphin says, reminder, Bills can, prob can probably nix any effort of a trade up for a wide receiver. Yes, they have 28, but they have a ton of draft capital. Guy says, what terrible ARG. Do you happen to know what our value was points wise when we took Walker number one overall? So I don't know what our total value was points wise, but I think the first overall pick is assigned three thousand like all the time. So like, like we would gotten we had three thousand. So um, according to that logic, you could have picked up um, three first round picks that were sixteen and lower. Now obviously it depends on the player. Obviously, you can't just assign 3,000 because depending on who the player is and that's available at that pick, that number can go up or down, obviously. Um, I don't think Trevon Walker was that highly sought after. So if the, if the, if the assigned value was 3,000 for Trevon Walker, it was probably more like 2,800, 2,750 when the Jags had that first pick. But when they had Trevor, it was probably more like 4,000. So, again, it's kind of spitballing here. Um. Jaggernaut says, feeling hopeful like every year, but hoping bulky pulls a non bulky and most of our draft are hits, not just our first round pick. Well, I think we're all hoping that. Volkfang says, I don't see the Saints being willing to tango with how bad their tackle situation is. Big Dog says, I wouldn't trade that much for Mitchell. He hasn't proven enough for a high level to trade multiple draft picks for. Yeah, I agree. I'm with you there. Nasir Premier says, Max Melton in the first or Renardo Green in the third. Or, or he says Max Melton in the second and AD pick at 17. I like that. All the drafts, the mocks that I've been seeing, I know in our chat mock drafts, we got Renardo green in the, uh, in the, in the third, but everything I'm seeing, it says he's going to go before our third round pick. So I don't think you're gonna be able to get him in the third. Unfortunately, I think future picks have a slight increase in value. Okay. All right. Let's go back to the, uh, mock draft simulator. Um, 14 quarterback wide receiver. Now this is where again Quinion Mitchell's gone, and now you're starting to look at as like um, Terry and Arnold's still available, and a lot of guys like him. Uh, but now you're looking at oh Nate Wiggins. Not a lot of people like Nate Wiggins too. Big, tall, um, athletic, press corner. He's still there. Um, Kool Aid McKinstry. So I mean, the next there isn't really another wide receiver up here. So let's take a look at what they do here. 
They take a tackle. Saints, I mean, that was pretty obvious to take a tackle. The Colts take Brian Thomas Jr. here. So, uh, like we already kind of already did the math at 15. To move up to 15, we would have to trade um, first, second, third. Or no, I'm sorry. Bad math. To move up to to move up to 15, we would have to trade first, fourth, and a fourth. And that would be like in a perfect world. It might take more than that. It might take a first, third, and a fourth, right? So, again, would you be willing to give up a first, a third, and a fourth to move up to take Brian Thomas Jr.? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, UCF Jaguar, look at that UCF Jaguar. This guy knows football. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, today is actually I'm just doing math today, so I think UCF Jaguar would be better at this type of thing than I am. Uh, given his extensive math background. Um, I'm just doing the math and going through the mock drafts and like what it would take to trade up for these picks. And uh, would you guys do that? And right now we're at Brian Thomas Jr. If the In order to jump the Colts, um, we would have to trade a first, a third, and a fourth, or a first, a fourth, and a fourth to move up for Brian Thomas Jr. Uh, Matt Gidry says, what's up, y'all? What's up? Mr. Dolphin says, I think Brian Thomas Jr. will be overvalued like around 10 to 15, but 80 might be undervalued like 20 to 25 by draft night, I mean. Yeah, you're right. We optimistic tonight. We're always optimistic. We're talking about how great Balky is at drafting and how he's going to make the right decision. All those things. Irish Jag says, Jason, I love this table. I'm going to watch the film draft day after the show and work out what points the Browns paid the Seahawks. For their overall pick. Wasn't it the Jags that traded out of the first pick in that movie? Or the Jags that traded them all the picks back? The Jags were involved somehow in that last little charade that Kevin Costner pulled off at the end of the game. Uh, Dolphin says, I'd be trying to move up a little for AD. That would be my plan. Or if the Bears will bite for a Dunze at nine. I think A.D. Mitchell, I mean, I don't know. I mean, he may go to the Seahawks here after in this pick. Yeah, I'm going 14 for Brian Thomas just so the Colts never draft him either. All right, uh, let's move on. So let's see who the Seahawks pick. All right, Talese Tuonga. All right, so Talese Tuonga is um, there. So now we're at 17. Best available players. We got J Jerzon Newton, who I don't think they're going to take because, again, I think the Reek Armstead kind of solved that. Even if it's only for a year, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the Jags value him and they take him. Who knows? Cooper DeGene, who's flying up mock draft boards, still available. Uh, Latu is still there. We already talked about the edge position a little bit. Uh, Byron Murphy, same situation as uh, Jerzon Newton. Um, we have Terry and Arnold. Nate Wiggins, Kool-Aid McKinstry. I think Terion Arnold is the pick here, even though I think Nate Wiggins is actually better suited for what um, our defense coordinator is going to do. Uh, so you never know there. Um, where is our friend? A.D. Mitchell. You know, again, here, he's kind of down the draft boards. If you kind of take a look at who, where he may go, you know, why the, the Steelers would be the next one I'd be worried about. So if you were to trade down to uh, 20, okay, down, if you were to trade down to 19, would we, I think what you would have to do, according to this table, to trade down to 19, uh, we would need 175 in value. Okay, so we are at 950, uh, 19, is valued at 875. That's actually bad math right there, boys. It's actually bad math. Uh, we would need 125. Isn't that right there? All right. 125. So we would need 125 points in value according to this table to move down, I think, ahead of Pittsburgh, who I think will take a wide receiver and will probably take A.D. Mitchell. So we take a look at over here. What is 125? What is the 125 range? So basically, we could pick up um, the 94th pick, which would be about a round three. So a late third round pick uh, would, or a mid third round pick, I think is what it would take uh, to make up that difference there. Um, so we traded back and then we have to pick up 125. 
So that's the value that we would have there. Again, it could also be a combination of uh, fourth, um, and next year's fourth, uh, fourth and a fifth. It could be a combination of that as well uh, to trade down. So you could pick up a few picks if that's who you were locked in on. Um, again, not even for sure that Cincinnati won't take one. But you feel like they're going to probably take an offensive lineman, if I had to guess there. If we take a look at who the draft or the trades, according to PFF, um, let's see here. We could get a uh, – let's see. If we, let's try this third-round pick here. Okay, this trade is likely to be accepted. So 108 and 129, but that would be for the total pick. That would be the total pick. Um, let's say the let's say the uh, who else is looking to move up the next pick. Let's say the Lions. Let's say we wanted to move down with the Lions. So we got their twenty nine. Um, we picked up their one sixty four, seventy three. Could we do their sixty one? So we could maybe get moved down to twenty nine and pick up sixty one, which would be a um, a low or a low second round pick. So if we move down to 29, we could pick up another second round pick. If we wanted to still make a pick in the first round, that would probably be what we have to do. Again, no telling how the trades will work out, but um, to stay in the first round and to still get a first round pick, um, the lower we move down in the first round, the better the pick, but the best you're going to get is probably a low second round pick. So question is, would you be willing to move down in the first round at the very bottom and pick up a low second round pick or a high third or a mid third, mid fourth? Because, you know, you could pick up a guy like Cooper DeJean there. Uh, you could pick up a guy like maybe, you know, Byron Murphy still there. Um, you know, you could maybe get a maybe get a Terry and Arnold, um, maybe get a Nate Wiggins a Kool-Aid McKinstry, a Jackson Powers Johnson. So you could theoretically make that move there if you wanted to. Um, Mr. Dolphin says, um, um, F the picks past the third round. I don't really disagree with you there. Uh, there's some question marks that I think some teams will not like. I think it's because he said he wanted conservative stamina and didn't usually run routes at full 100%. You're, you're, I know you're talking about um, Brian Thomas Jr. Yeah. BT says we still have a ton of young players from last year's round four to seven. So we we'll definitely trade those in this year, whatever it can help. But the Steelers haven't signed an actual center for their team. <laughs> I don't think you take a center in the first round. Maybe, maybe take Jackson Powers Johnson there. I wouldn't trade back. I would trade it up and get what you need. So you would stay where you're at, and then um, if you can trade up, trade up. If not, just pick a guy at 17. Folk fans, I think both the Dolphins and the Steelers are more likely to trade O line or to take O line, and Steelers may take a corner too. I wouldn't take that Lion deal from the Lions. Okay. The Jackson Powers Johnson Swiss will be interesting. Travis Powell says I wouldn't trade down at all. I'd move up. Yeah, they catch the ball. And, okay. Like I said earlier, 17 and 2025, third, and can get you 24 and 56 reliably. So trade next year's pick and a third to move back into the first round. Oh, A.D. Mitchell. You're right. You're right. A.D. Mitchell. Not Brian Thomas Jr. You're right. A.D. Mitchell. A.D. Mitchell. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, I mean, something, something to think about. Something to think about for sure. It'll be interesting. It'll be an interesting uh, draft this year. Um, I'm pretty excited because next week on Tuesday night, I got a very special guest coming on the show. Um, he was on the show at the beginning of the season this year, um, my good buddy Dalton. And I think you guys will like what he has to say. Uh, knows football really well, kind of an X's nose guy, kind of like me. Um, so we always have good conversations about football. Um, he's going to come on, and we're going to talk a little pre-draft. And he's going to come on after the draft, and we're going to talk a little post-draft. And then uh, the weekend of the draft, uh, my buddy Mike's coming on and talk about what the Jags did. We may do a live show. We did that last year. So you're going to want to be subscribed for the next couple weeks. Even if you unsubscribe after that, it'll hurt my feelings a bit. 
but at least you'll get the good content coming out here in the next few weeks. There's going to be a lot of content being pumped out the next few weeks, especially when the Jags pick. That's when the views are up, so that's when the people put out the content, including me. So make sure you are subscribed for all of that. I'm going to be real active on Twitter and Instagram these next few weeks, so make sure that you are on there. Uh, keep sending me what you would do on Twitter. As you can see, I love to bring up tweets, X's, and that way we can kind of figure out what uh, you guys like to do and want to do in those situations. That's going to do it for me tonight. I really appreciate you guys being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Shout out to all the channel members that were here. Volkfang, BT, Sea Breacher, um, Guy was here. Uh, Brett Zimmerman was here. Uh, scrolling through here, I'm seeing a, a bunch. Sorry if I miss you. Channel members, you guys are my favorite. Um, all you other channel members, are, or non-channel members, are also my favorite too. I'll have enough room in my heart for everybody. Rico, uh, I want to get everybody in there. Thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate it. Like I said, some good shows coming up with some guests, so you don't have to hear my voice the whole time. Uh, so make sure that you are subscribed and get all that stuff going. Um, I appreciate you guys. And then uh, I will see you guys, if not at the end of this week, I'll see you on Tuesday or next week, but probably the end of this week. So make sure you're there. All right. As always, go Jags.